Welcome to our tutorial about string functions. Let's open our rule for editing with a double click. Let us begin with the chr function, and I'll talk about what it does in a minute. I'm just going to copy and paste the variable name, space, equal sign, space, chr, open and close my parentheses. This function returns a character associated with a character code. So basically, you're working with the ASCII standard, and you may know that ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Exchange. The ASCII character code is based on the American English alphabet, and it's basically a way to represent text in a computer's equivalent of communication, which is, of course, numbers. So as you see in this chart of printable characters, each character is associated with a number. The number 65 represents the uppercase A. Let's take a look at lowercase a. That's represented by the number 97. All right, let's try it out in script. I'm going to enter a value here between the parentheses, 65. Let's click OK to run our command. Here's an uppercase A. Let's click OK, double click on string functions again to make some more changes. Let's plug in 97 this time, run the rule again. And here's lowercase a. Let's click OK, double click to open again. Notice that I'm entering the argument in the function directly, instead of declaring and initializing it up top like I've done before. dim a as integer. Let's initialize it with the number 97. Instead of the value, I'm going to place the variable in the function. Let's run the rule again. And we've got the same result, lowercase a. Let's take a look at another function, string reverse. I will copy and paste this line of code, and then comment the line above out. So result space equals space str reverse, open and close parentheses. The string reverse function does exactly what it sounds like it does. It reverses a string. So let's type in some text. We'll say name. That's our string. And let's click OK to run the rule. Our result is name spelled backwards, E-M-A-N. Let's click OK. Open up the rule for editing. Let's comment this last line out. Control-V to paste our variable and the equal sign again. space. Now let's take a look at our next function. I'll just double click to insert this function, CSTR. Let's type in a value, 6.87. This function converts a value into a string. When we run the rule, we see that visually nothing happened, but in fact the numeric value has become a string. Okay, let's comment out this line. Take a look at the next function, which is len, len. We'll just double click to bring it in. This pastes the snippet right into your code. This calculates the number of characters in a string. So LEN stands for length. Let's put in name, space as well. So we've got four letters plus a space in my string. Let's run our program. And the result is five. Click OK. Open the code again. Let's comment this out. Control V to paste the variable name. The next function I'm going to take a look at is format as fraction. I'm going to enter the argument directly. Let's say 5.25. And click OK to run the program. Here's our result, 5 and a quarter. So basically, what this function does is convert a numeric fraction into a standard fraction. So what happens when a given number can't be converted into a standard fraction? Let's enter a value that's not easily converted to a standard fraction. What you see here is that the function has returned the given number back to us. Let's learn how we can solve this problem. I'm going to comment this line out. Now control V to paste my variable and the equal sign again. Okay, let's use the round two fraction function. 
Let's enter my argument 5.27. And let's run the code, click OK. And five and a quarter is our result. Let's comment this line out. Another version of this function is to round up or round down. Double click to paste the snippet. And let's delete this portion of the code. Our argument will again be 5.27, and let's run it. We are returned 5 and 3 eighths. Let's open up the code again. Let's make it 1 over 16 this time. Click OK. Now our result is 5 and 5 sixteenths. Let's click OK. Open up the code again. Comment this line out. And let's paste in our variable name with a control V. I'd like to look at one more function here, read all text. Let me double click to paste the snippet. This function reads the contents of a text file and places those contents in a variable. In my working directory, I've got a text file. It has extension txt, file.txt. I'm using the relative path to my file. OK, let's run the program. And here we see the text within that file. We can use the absolute path as well. I'll paste the absolute path to my text file. And let's run the program again. OK, open up the code. Now let's delete this portion of the path. And I'll modify my argument a little. I'll type this doc dot path path space amper symbol space. And let's run our program again. Now we get an error message. Could not find file. Can you see what the problem is? I forgot to put in the backslash. So let's insert it and then run the program again. Click OK. And now our code is able to execute successfully. And this concludes our tutorial about string functions.